What is going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back. Week 9 Injury Report. Jake and Dr. Ethan Turner in the house to talk some injuries here for Week 9 Fantasy Football. And for the first time in a while, Ethan, we got no moment of silence this week. I mean, that's a, that's a positive. We're going to start off with a positive. That is a positive. Just like me defeating you in our Dynasty League last week without five starters, we are starting with a positive. That was a positive. No moment of silence is a positive. You you just love it. You, you love to see that, don't you? I figured since we talked about that off air that you wouldn't bring it up on air. You betrayed my trust. But the people needed to know because we I talked mean, yeah. about it last week. I mean, they I needed to know how that played out. And it played out with exactly Corey Davis. as I hoped it would. Your you, team laid a huge stinker. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan Taylor, for absolutely nothing. But since we have no moment of silence, we still have a lot of other big names to talk about. And I can sit here and talk about our dynasty matchup that you beat me on, but honestly, I'm trying to forget about it. Uh, let's <laughs> go ahead and start with our big hitters, though, because you've had enough time to sit there and smile at me. What about George Kittle? Now, they've already played Thursday night, but we know going forward that George Kittle on the verge of missing some serious time. George Kittle has been placed on the IR already. Uh, he is dealing with a cuboid fracture, which is a bone in your ankle. Uh, it's right next to the bone that you fracture. If you have a Jones fracture, the fifth metatarsal, it's just um, north of that. So it's the it's a kind of a cube-shaped bone in your ankle, uh, and he has a fracture there. Best case scenario, we're looking at about four weeks which would be as soon as he comes off the IR again with the IR this year, he's missing three weeks for sure. Worst case scenario is that this team does not get any better. They keep losing and they decide that they need to shut him down for the year with the season kind of already in jeopardy. I think the five or six week mark is most likely. So hopefully we will see him again this fantasy season. For the meantime, you're looking at Jordan Reed, a solid tight end option as long as he stays healthy himself. But this team is really hurting. They are they're in some serious trouble. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, and part of me just has this curious question: Is it called cuboid fracture because you said the bone is shaped like a cube? The bone is well, it's called a cuboid. The bone is called the cuboid bone. But, but you said it was shaped like a cube. It is shaped like a cube. That's why they call Perfect. it that. That sounds like something I would do, Ethan. That sounds like a doctor term that I would... You know, we're going to call this the cuboid because it looks like a cube. I, I didn't name it, man. This is, We're I, talking hundreds of years ago. I love it. I'm not complaining about it. What about George Kittle's teammate, Jimmy G? A lot of people talking about you know the injury history now of Jimmy G. What can we expect with him going forward? Garoppolo is dealing with a high ankle sprain. He also got placed on IR, so you're looking at three weeks minimum. This is starting to become kind of a trend with Jimmy G and you don't like to see this kind of happen over and over and over again. He's becoming one of those guys that I have a really hard time trusting. I think the team is going to have a hard time trusting him moving forward. And it just, it just sucks. Cause I think he is talented, but he just can't seem to stay healthy. Uh, Again, we're looking at about three weeks with the high ankle sprain. Nick Mullins is expected to start in the meantime. We have seen C.J. Beathard get some playing time as well if Mullins isn't playing well. I don't think either of those guys is a great fantasy option. Again, we're right in the middle of this game, so if Nick Mullins b blows up for five touchdowns, don't come harassing me in the comments. I just don't think either of those guys is a high-quality start. Yeah, like you said, we're, we're filming this during Thursday Night Football. It's literally like right above my monitors as I'm watching it here. So just keep that in mind as we're going through these these uh, projections here rest of season. But we, I mentioned Jonathan Taylor and how he hurt my feelings uh, to, to end last week because he screwed over my fantasy football teams. Uh, and then we heard at the end of the game from Phillip Rivers that Jonathan Taylor was nicked up, I believe was the quote. Frank Wright came out later and said, I didn't even know he was injured. So... Then it made it look like he was a little bit more benched. What's going on with Jonathan Taylor? Taylor's dealing with a mild ankle sprain, but it certainly didn't affect him like it was mild. He put up one of his worst performances of the year, only for us to find out that he was hurt. Was he actually hurt? Was he you know, kind of hurt? Did he get benched? It's not a good sign when your coach says that they didn't know about an injury. So uh, a little concerning there. Jordan Wilkins is expected to take on a larger role again this week, even if Taylor plays. I think there's a chance that he sits, 
based on how well Wilkins played in his absence last week. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just one of those things we watch here throughout the week, and I know he's already uh, gotten back to practice and getting more involved. If he plays, though, you hit it right there on the head. It's going to be a lot more Jordan Wilkins. We're still going to see some Naheem Hines. It's not all Jonathan Taylor, which really hurts the ceiling. What about Kenny Galladay? That's another big-name wide receiver that went down early last week that hurt a lot of people in their fantasy matchup. This one hurt me in a lot of places. He's dealing with an undisclosed hip injury. It could be a hip pointer, which is basically a bruise on the top of the, the hip. Basically, uh, it happens often with wide receivers that when they get tackled in the air, they fall and land on kind of the, the top of their hip. Um, and it can be very painful when you when you land in that way. It could also possibly be a small labral tear in the in the hip. That would obviously be more serious but we haven't gotten any real news on an actual diagnosis as of recording this. I expect Galladay to miss this week, probably next week as well. Hopefully by next week, we'll have a better idea of what is exactly is going on with him. And then we'll be able to give a more concrete uh, prediction on when he's going to come back. Yeah. Cause we need some, we need some Kenny G back in our lineups. What about another one of these high end wide receivers when they're healthy, Calvin Ridley of the Atlanta Falcons. Ridley is dealing with a midfoot sprain. He actually went down while we were recording last week's video. Ridley hasn't practiced as of Thursday. If we can find, if he is able to find the field today or tomorrow, I still think there's a pretty low chance that he plays, but that would be a better sign. If I had to guess, I would say he's probably going to miss this game, uh, but we will see if he practices on Friday uh, today if he is able to make a miraculous comeback from this midfoot sprain. But like I said, typically not going to play with these. Perfect. What about Ezekiel Elliott? Not that it matters these days because dude's putting up like nothing on an offense that's horrendous with Ben DiNucci under center and no offensive line. But what's going on with Zeke? Zeke's still in the hamstring strain. He was limited on Wednesday. I actually don't think this is a major issue and Elliott should probably play. But don't be surprised if we find him be a last-minute scratch. Hamstring strands can be kind of tricky to rehab. Uh, like you said, the team is really hurting. They're in QB purgatory. Uh, ben DiNucci isn't expected to play, so we're looking at, like, the fifth-string quarterback. Uh, that's not ideal. The O-line is a complete mess, and they have to play the best defense in the league, my Pittsburgh Steelers. So highly unlikely that Elliott is going to be effective in this game, even if he plays. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing is so many people were expecting so much more for Ezekiel Elliott. And I mean, it's, it's, it's just not happening, right? He just doesn't have a chance as of right now. Uh, and yeah, you mentioned, you know, sitting Ben DiNucci. So now that, uh, either what Garrett Gilbert or Cooper Rush, I don't think anybody is overly excited for either one of those guys. Uh, what about another quarterback though, that some people may need to use this week? What about Drew Brees? Drew Brees popped up on the injury report with a shoulder sprain. It is on his throwing shoulder, which is always good to note when we're talking about quarterbacks. He was limited on Wednesday, but I still expect him to play. But there is a small part of me that would love to see a Jameis Winston sighting here. I, I know that because he's been the backup, we haven't ever talked about him this year, really. But I just think it would be kind of cool to see him get out there and play. Especially against Tampa Bay. Is that the real reason you want to see him out there? I'm not going to say that that doesn't play a role in my <laughs> desire to see him get a chance here. I mean, if it happens, that would make – I would almost enjoy Sunday night football even more if that is the case. Not because I don't like Drew Brees, but I love those revenge games. That would be great to see Jameis play against the Bucks. But who knows? We'll see. If I had to guess, I'm no doctor, but um, Brees probably toughs it out. Uh, what about – some quick hitters now, Ethan, because we get, we've gone through some of the bigger names, but now we're going to rapid fire through some of these guys. Uh, what about Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde? The backfield of the Seattle Seahawks is just banged it up at this point. Yes, they are. Neither one of these guys looks likely to play this week, but Carson is expected to try out his foot on Friday or Saturday. If anything new comes out, we should know before Sunday, but right now it doesn't. Ex I don't expect either one of these guys to return DJ Dallas remains the best running back option for the Seahawks with both of these guys likely being out. Yeah. DJ Dallas put up solid fantasy points. Wasn't the most efficient runner on the ground, but he was a great fill in last week. If you had him, 
What about Mark Ingram in Baltimore? Ingram's dealing with a calf strain. He hasn't practiced as of yet this week, and he isn't actually expected to play. Continue to see J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards kind of split time in this backfield. Both are solid flex options. It really comes down to who gets the touchdown. I think that J.K. Dobbins is going to start taking this role, and honestly, if I have Mark Ingram, I am not expecting him to come back to any type of volume like he had before he injured his calf. Again, we talked about this over and over and over again this offseason. If you bought our draft guide, you will know that Mark Ingram was on my do not draft list. It is playing out exactly how I predicted it would in that draft guide. Yeah, I mean, he was a great value this year during draft season because you didn't have to spend an early pick on him but you also haven't really returned anything for that draft pick uh, here year to date. Plus, like you hit, like you said, J.K. Dobbins looked pretty good, and he is the future of this backfield, and why not continue just to give him a little bit more and more? Gus Edwards doesn't look half bad either. It's not like they really need Mark Ingram. Uh, here's a great one. This one, some good news, Ethan. Christian McCaffrey. Is it time for CMC? I really hope so. He's dealing with a high ankle sprain again that he's been dealing with all season. He has practiced in full all week so far, barring any unforeseen setbacks. He should be ready to return this week against the Chiefs. It's a pretty good matchup, and so I'm expecting big things out of McCaffrey. I think if he plays, you have well, you you don't have any doubt of starting McCaffrey if he plays. You have to start him. You probably picked him number one overall. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't want to get too cute. Not in a week with all these bye weeks and injuries and and, and all other types of things that you know teams all across fantasy football are dealing with. You can't really afford to sit Christian McCaffrey like ever as long as he's breathing. Uh, what about Matthew Stafford of the Detroit Lions? Stafford actually was placed on the COVID reserve list, uh, not because he tested positive, but because he had a close contact. It is possible that he can play this week if he's able to test negative. Uh, throughout the week he's so far he has done that so just kind of keep an eye on this one because there's there's still a chance that he does not play in this game but if he is able to test negative he should be able to suit up Uh, again this is kind of one of those right at the game time decision Uh, so for right now I'm going to say it's it's still leaning towards him not playing because he did have a close contact but I think there's probably looking at like 55, 45% chance that he, he plays versus he misses. It's bad enough we don't got Galladay. I don't want to have to worry about David Blow under center. Uh, what, about, <laughs> what about the man, the myth, the legend, Gardner Minshew in Jacksonville? Minshew is dealing with a thumb fracture and sprain on his throwing hand. He's already been ruled out this week. Hopefully you took my advice last week and grabbed a suitable replacement early. If not, it looks like Jake Lutton, the rookie, it appears to be in line to start this week. This is not a great news for this offense as a whole, but Jake Lutton has a big arm, so DJ Chark might get some looks downfield, might be able to salvage a wide receiver week. But again, not a great option at quarterback at all. Yeah, he's a he's a big, strong arm quarterback, 6'6", 220, and likes to stay in the pocket and deliver the ball, so not an absolute must-start by any means. What about Kenyon Drake? Drake's dealing with a high ankle sprain. Reports are that he is progressing quicker than they expected. I still think it's a long shot for him to play this week. Chase Edmonds remains a high-level RB2 option if that's the case. Again, kind of keeping an eye on Drake. I would not be surprised if he managed to you know, make it to this game because reports are pretty overall positive, but I'm just not expecting it. Uh, it's very rare to return from a high ankle sprain this quickly. Yeah, maybe as like an emergency use only thing like we saw in the past with Leonard Fournette. Uh, This one was an absolute kick in the nuts. What about Miles Gaskin? (laughs) Miles Gaskin has an MCL tear. He was placed on IR, expected to miss about four to six weeks with that. Jordan Howard is projected to play the majority of snaps at running back this week. If you're on a team that's really hurting for running backs, it's just kind of one of those cases where he's the only guy left. Uh, They did acquire DeAndre Washington, who is waiting for next week, but he won't be ready. So you're you're looking at Jordan Howard. Matt Breida is hurt. There's just really that Jordan Howard is kind of (laughs) it. Yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot of other options, right? We kind of talked about this before we came on the air, and 
and, and we're talking we're talking about Jermichael Hasty and Jarek McKinnon. Like, there's no other options. If you're looking for somebody who's probably going to get around 15 touches and you got no better you know options on your bench, Jordan Howard may be worth that dart throw. Uh, what about Michael Thomas? I mean, this is just turning into like an episode of Real Housewives over here because it's getting a little bit drama filled because Michael Thomas is even going to play at any point now. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> he has been practicing this week, which is a good sign. The team could still be cautious. Again, hamstring strains are notoriously tricky to rehab. Until we see him at full speed, there's no way to guarantee that he's going to play. But right now, I'd say there's about a 75% chance that he returns this week. And that's good news for Michael Thomas owners. Same situation as Christian McCaffrey. If he plays, you pretty much have to play him. But know that he does have the highest risk of re-injury or this hamstring strain as soon as he returns. Yeah, I mean, that, that, those initial push-offs is what's going to see if he can he can make it all game or not. What about Chris Godwin of the, of the Bucks? Godwin's kind of an interesting case. He, he broke his finger. He has a cast on his hand. He has been practicing in a limited fashion, but the team will be testing out if he can catch a ball on Friday. That's kind important. of important when we're talking about wide receivers that they can, you know, actually catch the ball. I think it's a long shot that he plays this week, but who knows if he does manage to play what that would look like with a cast on his hand. It can't be, I would not expect anything close to a super productive game. You have to remember that Tom Brady is throwing him the ball. And if he doesn't trust that he's going to be able to catch it, he's probably going to look somewhere else. I actually expect newly acquired Antonio Brown to see some action kind of all over this offense Antonio Brown is, as much as his uh, antics make us forget, he is a very talented wide receiver. And we saw this actually last year when Antonio Brown played his first game. Tom Brady looked for him often. Mm -hmm. And so the team has come out. They said they were really impressed with his ability, his conditioning. And so I would not be surprised if we see Antonio Brown take some serious snaps and get us a fair amount of targets. I think he's kind of in that wide receiver three range uh, flex play option this week, even coming off of, you know, essentially two years of not playing. (laughs) Yeah. It's crazy. If you fit into the right, you know, situation, you can start producing immediately. And that's what we could be looking at here right away for, from Antonio Brown. So they may not need to worry about Chris Godwin too much. They have other options there to throw the football, just not Ronald Jones because he drops it and fumbles it too often. But that's an entirely (laughs) different story. This this list wasn't as bad. The lists are getting a little bit shorter. Didn't have any serious, serious news outside of maybe some George Kittle owners out there a little bit worried. But uh, welcome to what it's like for all the rest of us in tight end purgatory because there's not a whole lot out there. Enjoy streaming the rest of the year just like a majority of people have. But Ethan, uh, hopefully we can continue this trend. Let's, let's continue to, to knock this list down and, and add more and more positive news on a weekly basis. Yeah, I hope so. The one thing is, is that we're at this type of year. Bad teams are going to start putting people on IR and keeping them there for the rest of the season. And so we, we're going we're gonna to see some players that maybe wouldn't be out for the rest of the year end up on IR and not expected to play for the rest of the year if they're on a bad team. So keep an eye on that. Uh, but but yeah, hopefully the list continues to get smaller. Hopefully we can keep out the moment of silences. We don't like to see those, but just know that we are going to see more people end up on the IR as this season starts to get to the end of the regular season with some of these teams that are already out of playoff contention. Yep, absolutely. Great point. Well, that was the injury show here for Week 9 Fantasy Football. Now, there's other people that maybe you have some questions on. So feel free to throw them down below. You got nine of them? Yep, one more. One. Oh, there you go. You got it. Nine. That's all nine. Yes, week nine. Like I said, there's other guys that are out there dealing with injuries. If you have questions, throw them down below in the comment section. We'll do our best to get you uh, some updates here as the week progresses. And remember, Saturday night live stream. Check it out. We'll have the most up-to-date information on that show. So if you haven't tuned into one of those, you may want to. It's a lot of fun. But we greatly appreciate the support. And for myself and Dr. Ethan Turner, we'll talk to you next week. <laughs>